morning. Um, so today's presentation is about EPA's Bulletin Live 2. So oftentimes when you all have a label, you might see on the label where it says con uh, consult the county bulletin or look at um, look for the bulletin for endangered species. And so essentially what EPA has done uh, because of the, the change and update in um, chemicals and um, finding new endangered species or declaring new endangered species, they decided to uh, update the Bulletin Live 2 to make it all online. So you still may see it on your label, but um, the, where you're going to find the information and where it's going to be updated the most is going to be on this, what they call uh, Bulletin Live 2. So <clears throat> uh, Alabama has a lot of, of, of different endangered species, one being um, the big brown bat um, or hognose bat. This is not the big brown bat. This is the hognose bat. Uh, I worked a little bit with bats when I was an undergrad uh, here at Auburn. So um, it's, it's really cool to kind of see the different types of species that Alabama has. And But we're just going to talk about this bulletin live too. All right. So the bulletin live too is a web-based application. Again, it allows you to access endangered species protection information, uh, help you to find those areas where um, uh, endangered species are, 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 uh, habit, are, are, are uh, located, and also um, allows you to know what chemicals uh, may affect those endangered species. So again, like I said, it used to be found in the county extension office or um, in on your label, but now they've moved it to all online. Uh, just so you know, this presentation could technically could take two hours or so. So we're going to cut this down uh, quite a bit for today, just to give you an introduction into the Bulletin Live 2 and to give you some idea about uh, how to go on it and to find information about uh, endangered species and those areas. So just quick definitions, the BLT is the Bulletin Live 2. PULA is the Pesticide Use Limitation Areas. This is the a designated um, acronym that EPA uses to let you know those locations where um, they don't want you to use uh, chemicals or they want you to limit the amount of, of chemicals that are used in those areas. Of course, the EPA registration number is the number given to manufacturers used to identify products. And limitations for selected area table is the listing of limitation areas on the downloaded P, uh, PDF that we're going to show shortly. <clears throat> There are a lot of species in Alabama that are protected. Uh, some we know of, some we don't. Uh, so the thing about the Bulletin Live 2 is it does not tell you what species you're protecting. It just tells you where you can't spray or treat. Um, there's, of course, some um, issues behind that. Uh, individuals want to be able to know what they're trying to protect. Uh, because they want to be able to make sure that they're not um, that they're not spraying in a time of season. For instance, if we have a a hotter summer and um, uh, the beetles tend to uh, go through aestivation kind of early or late or, or come out of it late, um, that could be an issue when you're trying to avoid uh, those endangered species. The other issue could be that um, the reason why EPA does not let you know those endangered species because people tend to want to collect these items and sell them. Uh, on the black market. So EPA does not want you to know where those species are because of course they're endangered for a reason. <clears throat> so basically when we're reviewing the bulletin, uh, we're gonna click that bulletin live to to enter the system, navigate to our intended pesticide application area using a location search. Um, we're gonna select our application month. It's gonna be auto automatically generated in there, but if you want to go uh, early, you can. If you want to look for something uh, later on down the line, you can. Um, and then we're going to, we can further define our research by entering the EPA product registration number. And I'm going to go through all this. We're going to do a little quick live one. Hopefully you'll be able to see me walk through this. Um, so if uh, a PULA occurs within the selected area, you'll click on the area. Um, a border surrounding will indicate uh, that it's been selected. And it will basically give you a table of the products that you can't use. And also you can print that out for later use. The benefit, of course, of this is that if there is a designation for um, the PULA that um, was not there when you originally printed that PDF, um, that could save you um, uh, some type of um, court time or anything like that. It can stop you from being uh, receiving a citation because you're treating 
when the um, PULA uh, does not uh, is not listed on that form when it's not listed on that form. So um, so it's a printable bulletin basically, and so we're going to go over this and look at it. But I want to talk about a couple of important notes. So the bulletin may be accessed up to six months before the pesticide application. But here's the thing: sometimes the bulletins can be, like I said, can be updated um, after you know within that six month window. But if EPA allows you to print it six months before you make the application, you can kind of manage your applications. You can make a decision, and you can kind of um, uh, ho hopefully be able to uh, avoid hurting any endangered species. The other thing, of course, is it reduces your liability if you already have a printed bulletin and you can show proof of that. But um, I always tell people to try to do it no later than a month before, um, or, or if you're gonna do it that day, you can print it then, because they do get updated quite frequently. And sometimes they may shift. Um, <clears throat> bulletins are enforceable um, the, you know, under FIFRA. So you wanna make sure that you share that information. There are a lot of pesticides that are out there that, um, that are listed on these bulletins. So you wanna make sure that um, anyone that you're working with or, or if you're using any type of chemicals that you're referencing these bulletins, if it says it on your label. So check that label. That's why it's very important to read the label. Um, so again, we talked about why those bulletins um, uh, are important. And of course, you know, the state may have pesticide use limitations found beyond those in our bulletin. So Department of Ag has posted uh, a few notices about um, uh, on their website about endangered species. So you always want to make sure that you review those and you want to look at the 24 C's as well. So you can be aware of any type of pesticide limitations um, within our state. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we're going to do right now very quickly is we're going to, uh, I'm going to stop this share here and I'm going to pick up a new share because what we're going to do is we're going to go to the bulletin itself and we're gonna run through how to use this bulletin. Okay, let's do a new share. All right. Okay, so we're on uh, EPA's Endangered Species uh, Protection Bulletin. Hopefully you all can see this page here. And I am going to scroll down here um, and I'm going to enter the, the system here. Computer's a little slow there. All right, so this is the bulletin live too. So hopefully you all can see this fairly well. I'm gonna give it a couple of seconds to upload. Excuse me. All right, so at first glance, you'll see you have the entire United States here. Any area that's kind of shaded in this little pink area, those are all um, protected areas. Those are all pesticide use limitation um, areas. So the cool thing about the Bulletin Live 2 is that if you don't want to put anything in the search location here, all you have to do is basically make this area larger. And um, you can click your area um, that you're interested in to, to identify those areas that are protected. Now, if you notice here on the left-hand side, if you guys are following my um, mouse, it's already set for March, okay? So it's already set for March, automatically it fills in for March. So what you normally will wanna do if you have a future uh, month coming up, so it won't let you go back because it does that on purpose because it doesn't want people that possibly sprayed and now are getting infected by the Department of Agriculture to go back and say, oh, I did print out one when they actually, they didn't. So you can pick whatever month you need to pick. So we'll just, for the sake of this, just pick May um, and it's gonna generate us a new map. So it already generated the new map. Let's see here. Yeah, make sure. All right. Um, now we could stop right here um, and we could do a printable bulletin and it's going to print um, basically the full United States because we don't have a location area in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put Alabama <clears throat> and uh, for May. So we were to print a bulletin right here. It would give us all the chemicals within Alabama and all the limit um, and all the areas where there are um, uh, PULAs that we need to be concerned about. So that makes it a lot more difficult. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, Tuskegee here. <clears throat> all 
All right. So if we want to stop right here and print the bulletin, it would give us for the month of um for the month of for the month of May, it would give us all the chemicals and all the areas that we need to be concerned about. Okay. Um, but we're not going to stop there. I have an EPA registration number. We're going to put in a dicamba product, uh, Fexapan Plus with vapor grip. So the cool thing about this is once you start typing in the EPA registration number, it'll start pulling up other products that um, are listed. So we're going to put that there. OK. And then we're going to click Print Bulletin. It's slow today. So if someone calls your office and they have a label and they don't know how to access the bulletin, this is the way you can help them um, access this information. All right, it's still moving a little slow here. All right, so on the left-hand side, it gives you information about uh, the products that, um, or the product that you typed in. If we were to left the product blank, it will give us all the products within that month that we need to be concerned about. So we'll click printable bulletin. And please let me know if you can still, if you can see this bulletin when I pull it up. If not, I have to do a new share, let's see. Oh, you should be able to see the bulletin. Let's see here. Okay, let's do this right there, okay. So this is the bulletin that you're going to print out. This is the one that um, um, that you'll be able to use to identify that limited use area and to make sure that you are um, not spraying in those areas. And this is what Department of Ag is going to pull when they pull it, do an assessment if they get a call about endangered species. They have the ability to go in and pull earlier ones. So this is a summary. It's showing you the area. And then it also lists down here um, the products as well. So it has the EPA registration numbers, as you see right there. Uh, and it, now if we were to not put this name in there, it will generate all of those, okay? It'll tell you the limitation, okay? Um, it gives you specifics on how to, to utilize your product um, as well. And so when you would print that out and you would utilize that, to um, if, if it allows you to even spray in those areas, because in some instances, it'll say you can spray in the morning or you can treat in the morning um, uh, um, or you can't at all during that time frame. So this is how the bulletin lot to generally works. Now, Department of Agriculture, um, see if hopefully you can see this page here that I'm sharing, um, has up some endangered species information. So they already have some bulletins already um, available to you. Let's see here. Make sure you can see this when it opens up. There we go. <clears throat> so on their website, occasionally, they will have some information about uh, the bulletin live too. Um, and there's more detail and more specifics into uh, how to utilize this information. But this is just the gist of it. This is just the basics. And it's, it's really good at outlining um, uh, the, how to use the, you know, the product or the, the information on the product. The only downside is, again, is that it doesn't tell you what the, what the endangered species is. And it also, it does not, it, it's a very broad area. And that's pretty difficult for some individuals, whereas it's just basically it's a blanket where it may not even be um, any endangered species in that area, but they just want to protect them. So th that's kind of the downside of it. But if you notice here, um, they have a listing of all the products for that um, uh, for that endangered species. And it tells you you're not allowed to use fumigants in that area. So that gives you an idea. But I just wanted to kind of touch on that with you guys, kind of give you some insight into how to use that bulletin live too. Um, it's, it's way more in depth, um, but you know, as far as time is concerned, I did not want to 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 go further into anyone else's time. Um, so it's it's pretty cool how they worked out the endangered live two bulletin. 
And um, and I'm really kind of happy with the, the layout that they have right now versus what we used to have. It used to be pretty difficult to find this information. So I'll take any questions that you guys may have. 